Commentary blue. Commentary burgundy. Burgundy. Commentary com comment blue. Commentary comment burgundy blue. Commentary blue. Commentary. Hey y'all, good morning. Hope all is well with you and yours. Welcome back to Burgundy Blue Commentary. I just was stopping in here really quickly. <laughs> I know we say that every day. Can I be recognized, Mayor? You trying to be long-winded? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. Y'all, I know I say that every day, but <laughs> today I really have to run. I just wanted to come on here too and say thank you so much. We made it to six. K, we made it to 6K. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, you guys. So I know like I have to get back to my uh, regular scheduled program. Not gonna leave you guys out there because y'all, I was covering Gypsy Rose, and I don't know if y'all know who Gypsy Rose is, but Gypsy Rose, she's another she's her whole story is like something I love to talk about she was the one that was in the wheelchair and her mother her mother dd blanchard she had munchausen by proxy right so she was making dd she was making gypsy rose sick a lot a lot a lot a lot went on gypsy rose met this dude on the internet they decided to get rid of her mother unalive her mother and she got seven years and her boyfriend got life right so she got married, y'all. I'm giving you the run there. Right. So Gypsy Rose. So this is why I won't be back for a minute. <laughs> so Gypsy, I'll be back, but I have I won't have as many lives. So Gypsy Rose got married to this dude, right? And so um she got out of jail. She got married to this dude. I want to see if I got a picture of him. Uh, I probably don't. I, I was talking this how long. Oh, here you go. She got married to this dude, right? She got married to Ryan. They was walking the red. Now mind you, she didn't she didn't off to her mom, right? So she's walking the red carpet with him and everything. And they only been married. Um, she only been out of jail since December. So she only been out of jail since December. So long story short, what's this March? So the end of last month, she announced she's divorcing dude. And um, she got back with her ex. <laughs> so y'all, I got to get back to talking about <laughs> and she didn't went now she didn't went and got married, told us this, that that man in that picture, hey, Lucille, good morning. Thanks for being here told us that that man in the picture now this was gypsy rose words not mine that he he the d is fire that's what she said so i have to get back to talking about her because child she didn't left her husband and got back with her ex-man and i wonder if the husband's gonna get all the money because remember she was making money off her reality show the story of her life and all that stuff so girl gypsy rose is acting up so i gotta get back over there and then i gotta finish my sister wife so i'm i'm saying that thanks for the people that still tune in to me because i have been missing an action now that this dalton stuff took over good morning igbu queenu good morning um so good morning everybody peppy princess good morning yes it's zen master zen master he's on instagram zen master beats yeah he did my music and super mario style did my logo a long long time ago and i appreciate them both um so okay so this is what happened y'all so i was over on hannibal is hungry page and he had an interview with a thornton township employee and I thought it was quite interesting. And then, oh, I wanted to look housekeeping. Before we get there, uh, I was watching Late Night Crew. You know, I don't know what's wrong with me, y'all. Maybe because I get up so early, but I be falling asleep. Um, and then in between this stuff, guys, you got to do your research. So in between, um, sorry, I don't have my coffee this morning. In between me talking to you guys, I have to do my work. And then, which I appreciate you guys, don't get me wrong. And then after I do my work, I have to go online and research, reply to emails. I still haven't gotten to my emails today, guys. So um, research what I'm talking about. So it's a mess. So then I get sleepy, but I go I wake up and try to finish Shay's live. But he mentioned that Dr. Nikita Cloud, today is Friday, right? So he's going to have Dr. Nikita Cloud on and he's going to have Kara Wilson, Alexis Wilson mom on his live. And also if you're a Dalton resident or some somewhere near the area, and I thought this was a pretty smart idea. Um, 
he's going to have a call in. Like you can call in anonymously if you want to. I think this is a smart idea because I follow that Dalton P Politics page, right? Sorry, guys. Okay, this is why I thought, thought Late Night Crew. It's Late Night Crew. If you guys don't know who I'm talking about, Late Night Crew, follow him. Um, so I thought it was a smart idea for him to have a call in because in my opinion, um, in my opinion, that Dalton politics, if it had, if people could talk on there, they would, you know what I mean? Without the mess, <laughs> without the mess, if they could talk on it, they would. Um, and I think that it's some people that have stuff to say, but may not want to go to the board meetings. Um, people that want to be involved but don't know how to or to share their experience because sometimes as like a former dog night or dog night or whatever um i see stuff and i be like um I, who who said that that ain't how that went who said that that'd be me like with the portion voice so I think it's really cool that he's going to have a call in. So um, check out Late Night Crew. So you'll hear from some people on the ground. Some people have to say, and I'm sure he's going to have some people that support Tiffany too, because I don't think a lot of times the people that support her feel like they can come out and say anything, if that makes sense. They feel like, I feel like they, like, we know that lady was a plant that was reading from that paper. <laughs> We know she was a the way she was reading was just scary to me. <laughs> that was just scary. <laughs> I can't look, I couldn't even sleep at night because I saw that lady face. So I think it's gonna be maybe some supporters too calling in because they they probably scared to go to the board meeting and say nothing. Not that anything will happen to them, but then they're like, Man, I really don't you ever been like that? Like, I really don't want to be the first one to say it. I don't want to be the first one to say it. That, that's what he's going to have in the call in. I know for a fact. Okay, so then we'll have to. So it was this lady, a beautiful lady on, um, she's been on Fox News, but she was on Hannibal is Hungry yesterday. Shout out to him. Um, Hannibal has good interview skills. So he was, um, she was over there on Hannibal is Hungry channel. And y'all, she said basically she got fired. And I think she's one of the employees that um, is suing Thornton Township by Tiffany, right? But the lady almost had a heart attack. She, I mean, she did have a heart attack. So I wanted to play a little bit of her, what she had going on. And then to let you know, this morning I get up and Fox News is looping. They're 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 looping Tiffany Henyard's situation like I, I mean they're covering it like she's Trump. Um, it's it's amazing to see that it reached these levels. That's what I'm saying. Like it's amazing that people are the people from Dalton, not people from Dalton, that people all over the world is watching. Dalton. It's really quite interesting. It's 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 not I've never seen nothing like it. Um hold on guys, I just got a piece of paper. Kwame Raul is acknowledging Okay. Kwame Raul is starting to write people back. I, I just saw that. Okay. Let's go on here and watch this. I saw this morning that Sherry Britton, she's, it's like, you'll see the same um, faces a lot. Miss Sherry is one. Um, I'm calling them Miss because I, I don't, not, not that we're not the same age or anything like that, but, um, I always be like Miss Sherry, Miss Vivian. I don't know. Um, so Miss Sherry's one, Miss Vivian. Of course, you always see um uh, Miss uh Stubbs. You see her a lot, and Miss Avon. So it's quite interesting um now that we're getting to see the some new faces share their story because sometimes it's cool that we that they're standing up for dog. No get don't get me wrong, it's very cool, but 
sometimes you hear from the same people, the same story. So I was really excited to see that somebody else had a new story. Preppy Princess says, Hannibal knows how to allow the interviewee to tell their story and knows when to ask questions at the appropriate time. Yeah, he has a really good, really, really, really good interview skill. He seems very patient. Hi, Regina. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Okay. So let's go ahead and hear from this young lady. And um, I thought it was interesting. It, it was interesting to hear another story. Okay, let's go ahead and cue it up. And thanks for being here, guys. And thank you. We made it to 6K. Whoa. Whoop, whoop. I said, ain't no stopping this now. <laughs> I, I can't get that song out. <laughs> I can't get that out of my head. Good morning, Scott. Okay, let's go ahead and share the screen. Okay, come on now. Come on now. My design business work. All right, we're over here now. It ain't no stopping us now. This is a long ad, guys. Ooh. Am I on the right thing? Yeah. I'm like, this is a long ad. Okay. Verizon said they wanted all their time. Tracy is suing the mayor. She's been fired from her job. She and her attorney. Uh, Matt Costardo, join us now. Good morning to both of you. Uh, so your town is about 20, 25 miles due south of Chicago. Uh, and Sandra, you're one of at least three people suing this mayor. I understand you showed up for work. You were locked out. You worked out of your car in the parking lot for months, and then you were fired. Uh, let's get your story first, then we'll get the mayor's defense. What's your allegation? I didn't think I was going to have to pause it that fast. You guys, hey, good morning. I'm sorry. I, she was locked out. Why is that a thing? Like, why is it the thing to lock people out? of uh, where they work and then they still have to, did she still reported to work and was working out her car like what is that about is it like a hey tag good morning critical thinking good morning is it like a it's a mental thing i think like why would you lock this woman out of her office she's still employed and she's working for the parking lot i wonder what her let's see if we find out what her job description was Well, well, that's correct. Uh, I was on a medical leave, an FMLA medical leave, and I attempted to return back to work. I asked for a meeting to go over the details of my return. And unfortunately, I was not given any place to work in the building. So I couldn't work in the building since I had no place to work. So I worked in my car. Here is um, Matt. Let me just get your take on this. The how quickly could this lawsuit get resolved? Because Henyard, the mayor, seems like she is dug in. Yeah. So first of all, thank you, Dana and Bill, for having us on the show sure. this morning. She's dug in. I I think she's um, she's used to being a bully and intimidating people. She's not backing down. Uh, but neither are we. You know, we've got people uh, like uh, our clients, Sandra. She's not backing down. She's stepping up and uh, she's going to keep fighting this. OK, here is one woman who is undergoing cancer treatment and her presentation at the town meeting. I apologize if I seem irate. I have my radiation today. I have cancer. Of course I do. Tiffany stole money from a cancer foundation. How dare you? How dare you steal? And I helped you with your campaign. How dare you steal from us? I had to buy my wig. Are you going to reimburse me for the wigs that I've been spending my money on? A, a lot of these complaints deal with money, as I'm sure you're well aware, Sandra. Uh, the, the mayor said, and I just want to quote her, uh, she said, I will state facts, I will show receipts. Does that happen? Yes. I think I'd like to clarify that 
I was not an employee of the village of Dalton. I was an employee of Thornton Township. I was the human resources manager for the township. Okay, noted there. Uh, sir, does she have receipts to show where the money went? Look, there's been no transparency. It's gotten so bad that the village board has asked the FBI to come in and investigate because Mayor Henyard refuses to be transparent about how she spent taxpayer dollars. So there's been no transparency at all. Let's listen to Mayor Henyard. This is her saying that she wishes that people would come for the good news. Watch. But I wish you guys would come for the positive things and not the chaos and not the media show, because that's all this is. I get it. We're clickbait. We're hot right now. And I get it. This is what sells papers. But it's sad that people tell you false information with no facts and y'all run and y'all write it y'all know y'all can destroy people's lives by just writing things that's not true do, do you feel sandra that people's lives in dalton they're the ones who have been suffering people have really been damaged by this administration um my personal situation is that uh i was trying very hard to get paid and I couldn't get anybody to respond to me, not to call, text, or email. And the pressure of not getting paid for so long actually had a very bad effect on me. I experienced a drop-dead major heart attack. And so people are having issues from the leadership of this administration. Wow. How are you feeling now, Sandra? I'm feeling great. Good. Uh, okay, I've never been a sick person, thank God. <laughs> but uh, that was something that was so horrific to not be paid, to not be allowed in the building. My manager actually told me, don't come in, stay on the porch. Wow. Uh, stay healthy. And again, you look, you look good. Yeah, she's a beautiful woman. Thanks thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Matt. We'll see where it goes, thank okay? You. Thank you. So, wait a minute. So she was in HR. Thank you for that, guys. Um, so she was in HR, and then um, they locked her out. She had to work in her car. So I guess she came back from FMLA. So I'm wondering what she's on. Was she? And uh, I think Hannah will touch on this, but I don't. I'm not sure. But was she on FMLA? Um, was she on FMLA? under Zuccarelli administration or was she on FMLA under Tiffany's administration? And then you just can't, and that's the thing, like people are always saying nobody gives them an answer, but we could see that that to be true. Just like when um, the mayor runs from like interviews and stuff like that, no one gets the answer. No one gets the answer. And then I also, Wait, let's read these comments before we go there. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Regina. Regina says, um, and thanks, Scott. Um, the lawyer's about to get paid. If enough people come forward, he can file a class action suit. Um, I think it's a that that yeah, I think it will happen. That cop being up there was unnecessary and probably illegal. Yeah, can you imagine? I think when Miss Stubbs talked to former trustee Valeria Stubbs, when she talked. Uh, an officer came from out the back, sort of, and she had one on the side of her in the podium and one in the behind her in the podium. It's funny she's talking about the media ruining people's lives when Tiffany had destroyed many lives herself. Do you cover Love at the Lockup? I used to like that show. No, I cannot catch up. I just covered the TLC show so far. The, the TLC show. <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> they can't find legit supporters. For her that isn't paid yeah yeah it's messed up can you imagine three weeks like because your bills are getting behind i think she had said on hannibal she had an issue with her husband as well right her husband was going through something and then um you turn around can't get paid the stress i mean thank you so much thank you so much she started she started out fmla during zuccarelli then came back during Henry. Tiffany began at the township right after she went on FMLA. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I was reading this article on um, let me see, was it Lansing Journal? Hmm. 
me go right back to you know what? Let me go right back over here to YouTube. But I was reading an article. Um, and actually, Lansing Journal had a shot of a, a meeting where Kim Fox showed up. Um, let me see if I got it here. I'm gonna pull it up. So I want to show you guys how the meetings used to. Let me see if I got it. Um, Kim Fox, so you can see. And thanks for being here, guys. I want to show you a little bit of how the meetings. Now, this was in the. Okay, so Kim Fox was coming to town. And I believe they rented uh, Thor Ridge Auditorium. Let me just show this part. Um, yeah, exactly. Tag says one person, some people can't. Most people can't afford to miss one paycheck. Yeah, and you're missing three. And um, Steve says, the day she went on FMLA was Tiffany's first day she was appointed or in office. Oh, yeah. Let, let, me, let me say this. Um, this is this is what's going to happen. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a big lawsuit, right? This, this is going to happen. Because um, I'm still confused on why... Um, and maybe you guys can help, but you know how, like, the whole Andrew Holmes thing, um, it always confuses me on how, why the um, victim is suing, suing Thornton Township. Like, um, she's suing Dalton, the mayor, the trustees, right? I mean, the, the unnamed trustee, right? For what happened in Vegas. But then on the lawsuit, she's suing Thornton Township. So I always wonder because this person was an assistant, do she is she suing Thornton Township for another reason, or you think she's suing Thornton Township because Tiffany is the supervisor of Thornton Township, or do you think she's suing Thornton Township because she no don't know how no money? I just always I'm wondering what's going on there. Always just just question, just a question. So I want to read this article. And this is from Kim Fox. I mean, this is from Lancet Journal, I'm sorry. And it's regarding Kim Fox. And I think she was at the auditorium at Thornridge in this. No, it's South Suburban. Okay. She was at South Suburban. And um, this was a Q&A with her. And I want to just show you before we even get to the article, how many people showed up. Now, they got this because it was an open meeting. They got the audience and it was approximately... 40 people, and that included Fox staff, okay? So I, this meeting happened in 2023, July 27th of 2023. Now, I want to tell you, uh, let's talk about it. Now, you're looking at this photo, right? Look how many people are there. Now, the board meetings have the last, what, year almost, close to it, the board meetings have been standing room only in Dalton and Thornton Township. The state's attorney comes out and less than 40 people show up. Okay. They, again, open meeting state's attorney, you got questions and she's addressing Harvey, Dalton, Riverdale. And this is how much, how many people are coming out. I think that's important to, look at important to know this picture this is how many people nobody rushed into the microphone no and this was only in july of 2023 so it says uh, july 27 2023 cook county state's attorney kim fox visited the south suburbs on july the 20th the purpose of the of the keeping up with kim event was to inform residents about the cook county state's attorney's office and to answer pre-submitted questions. Now, it says, according to the Cook County State's Attorney website, the office is the second largest prosecutor, prosecutor's office in the United States and represents the 5.2 million residents of Cook County in criminal prosecutions and civil matters. The published mission of the office is to do justice in the pursuit of thriving, healthy, and safe communities. The 30 to 40 guests at the event were given four data reports. 
one for Cook County overall, and separate reports for Dalton, South Holland, and Harvey. Each report had CCSAO statistics from the beginning of the year through July of, seven, of 17, July 17th. Okay, and that's CCSAO is Cook County State's Attorney Office who prosecuted 10,865 cases. And in 7,522 of those cases, a defendant was determined to be guilty of criminal charges. For Cook County overall, unlawful use of weapons, retail theft, and sex crimes were the top reviewed categories. For Dalton, South Holland, and Harvey, unlawful use of weapons ranked as the top reviewed category, averaging 25 amongst three areas. Okay. For Dalton, the next two top reviewed categories were homicide and uh, armed robbery. For South Ho Holland, four homicides and four thefts were reviewed. Harvey's top reviewed areas were a category named other offenses and possession of stolen motor vehicles. Okay, so this was when the audience questions came about. Good morning, everybody coming in. Thanks so much. Okay. So again, we're we're reviewing how many people came up when the state's attorney came out when the state's attorney had her questions with Kim, keep it up with Kim situation. Fox and her local office representatives answered questions from the audience, some of which had been submitted via the registration form of the event. Others were collected on paper during the event. Question number one, there's a lot of interest in the updates in terms of the wrongful conviction cases that your office have been working on, as well as the efforts you have had to implement restorative justice when it came to these cases. Can you discuss this with the audience here about those type of cases? So Kim Fox says, when I came into office, I made reviewing wrongful convictions a top priority. Fox stated that Illinois led the country in vacating wrongful convictions currently at 253. Jeez, wow. She mentioned that a majority of those cases came from a corruption scandal of former Chicago police sergeant Ronald, sorry guys, Ronald Watts. She highlighted the conviction integrity unit and post-conviction unit within the office that looks into credible claims of innocence. Question two, how can we as a community intervene and engage youth before the Cook County State's Attorney Office has to be involved with the case? Hmm. Fox said, we believe that criminal justice system is what, the, is what the failure is and not the failures of our community to invest in things we know produce healthy, active children. Fox answered the questions by recalling her childhood upbringing she remembered the accountability the community had for raising and protecting children. She urged residents to take the same accountability to bring programming, mental health services, and positive peer support for black for youth back into the neighborhoods. You know what? I, I have a question about like mental health stuff, mental health services. They put it out there, but is it that easy to get? Like, does anyone know? Is it that easy to get, like, just walk in somewhere and say, I want to sign in for mental health? Do they start right away? Like like Thornton Township, do they start right away? Do they make you wait a few weeks? How do you get the mental health services? And is it free? Okay. So this was the juicy stuff, y'all. The only question related. Now, remind you, I want you to look at this audience, 40 people. And we're talking about they rented out the auditorium, okay? Um, we're talking about Harvey, Dalton, South Holland, all could be, Riverdale, all to be involved. So it was only less than a year ago, okay? The only question related to alleged unethical activities by Tiffany Henyard. It was question number three of the meeting. Can you give us some direction or advice about the unethical activities by both the Dalton mayor and police department? Now, this was in July. I just want to reiterate that. 
This is what Kim Fox had to say. Hold on, let me put this picture up here. Y'all know, I know my girl succeeding too. Eat me up, she see this picture. She's like, well, you don't know what the picture meant. They go Kim Fox down here by Maria Papas. And in the middle, we got Tiffany Henyard. Hang, hang yard. That's what Jenna Dye said. Tiffany, hang yard. Now, this is what she says. What I will say that if you believe that any elected official or any public servant is engaged in criminal conduct, to reach out to your local law enforcement. Okay. Now, the question was, I want to go back to the question. Can you give us some direction or advice about the unethical activities by both the Dalton mayor? And the police department. Okay, I wanted to make sure. And the police department was on there. This is what she says. What I will say is if you believe that any elected official or any public servant is engaged in criminal conduct to reach out to your local law enforcement. Okay, Miss Cheryl Hill, you heard that? Reach out to your local law enforcement. What? Okay, if you believe that that is not sufficient, we have in our office our public corruption unit and our special prosecutions bureau. Their job is to look at allegations of public corruption so you can reach out to our office directly. We have investigators within that unit who can sit down with you and you can tell us what you believe some of the allegations some of what of that could be mismanagement of funds or diverting funds some of that could be threatening folks if you believe that people are abusing their positions of authority you may reach out to our public integrity unit within our special prosecutions bureau i think hold on let me copy and paste this this is what kim fox said Sorry, guys, want to copy and paste that so y'all know this is what she told y'all to do. Is Mr. Larry here? Somebody said, what's that? <laughs> okay, that's what I put in the chat. I'm going I'm to start. You may reach out to our public integrity unit within our special prosecutions bureau. I think it's really important in these cases, and again, I'm not saying, I mean, I'm trying to be real careful. It also requires people showing up to see how money is spent, right? You got to show up to the board meetings when they vote on these projects. When they vote on, it's right there. A, su a supporter in the crowd said, say it again, okay? Kim Fox acknowledged the affirmation and said, you got to show up to these council meetings, okay? Y'all got to show up. Look how you showed up today. Now, look how they showed up today, y'all. 40 people, less than 40 people. Less than 40 people. She said, look how you show up today. We got to show up at these council meetings and hold folks accountable. They're accountable to the public. And a lot of times... What we've seen is that in these cases of public corruption, it's right under people's noses. It's right there, and there, and there are whistleblower protections if you work in the government. There are whistleblower protections if you work in the government. Want to repeat that? That's what she said. If you've seen something directly, there are protections that they have for whistleblowers. It requires you to tell us what's happening. We don't know unless you tell us, okay? But you also have to be vigilant. Go to these meetings, ask questions, go to the website, look at the financials. Well, we know we can't see nothing on our website. Look at the financials to be able to help us because we won't know unless you tell us. But you have to be present. The best eyes and ears in those type of cases are average citizens. It is the tips from average citizens that have broken a lot of these cases open. Following the meeting of the member of the CCSAO communications team, that's the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, offered to provide the Lansing Journal with contact information for someone in the Special Prosecutions Unit 
who will be able to help specifically with the purported yep, unethical activities in Dalton and Thornton Township as of July 27th. They have not received that information. Did, did y'all hear that last part? Because I know this was a boring article, but it really wasn't. It says, at the end of the meeting, a member of the Cook County State's Attorney Office communica communications team offered to provide the Lansing Journal with contact information for someone in the Special Prosecutions Unit who would be able to help specifically with the unethical activities in Dalton and Thornton Township. As of July 27th, they still haven't got that information, y'all. They haven't got that information. Okay, and here's how you could contact the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. Let me put it right here. They still haven't gotten that information. Can, can you imagine? Can you imagine? So, so this is what I wanted to talk about that. Okay, two things. Um, did any of the trustees go to this meeting? Because we do know that during that time, so I found a little timeline on the Lancet Journal. So the Cook County State's Attorney Office was right there in, in South Holland, up the street from Village Hall. Okay, I want to just see the first. So... This was in July. This was in July, okay, of 2023. 2023. And the Dalton trustees were calling for the recall, right, in July of 2022. I mean, April of 2022. Because this article says Dalton trustees vote to sue Mayor Tiffany Henyer. OK. Um, accusations started in 2022. Um, wait a minute. They said Dalton, Do Do Dalton dominates Thornton Township meeting because at this point she's there, right? She's there. Good morning, Dalton trustees. Thank you so much. Thank you for the 199 super chat. Um, so did the Dalton trustees go down there to talk to Kim Fox or did they maybe, did they see? Because she was right in South Holland, but at the same time, the Lansing Journal did, didn't get, they didn't give her any, give them any information to follow up, right? So that was July of 2023. Now look at this article. June of 2022, st stuff started to get complicated, right? J June of 2023, it was the spending al allegations. <laughs> so who from Dalton, other than the person that had question number three, came to talk to the state's attorney about what was going on. In July of 2023, Dalton was having all those problems, but only 40 people showed up to the meeting. I'm just wondering, did anybody know it was a meeting? Okay, let me read some of your comments, guys. This is true. Kim Fox and Tiffany are political allies, so there's no way that the Democratic Party... Democrat Party will investigate itself because of the current political environment. Yeah. Yeah. John Luna. Hey, LAR. Thanks for being here. Yeah. It. Yeah. If. Hey, JB. If Fox is playing party politics, she's not going to go after Tim. Commander Alpha Turkey. Jay Jones. Dalton Trustees. Thank you again. John Luna. Regina. In my opinion... Fox would not go after Tiffany unless she has no other choice. She has her own baggage. And she's she's out of there now, right? Because um um was it Burke? I think it was one won the, the seat. Stacey Turner. She didn't even run again. Kim Fox didn't even run again. And she has a, a, a young family, so I can understand why. Fox absolutely knows what's going on by now. There's no whistleblower protection in Dalton government. Yeah, we can see that 
we can see if you're you're going to be out you're going to be out right it's not going to be you if you have something to say it's either just sort of like we saw the police at the at the board meeting one thing i noticed with the police officer i think it was commander riley one thing i know is that you guys this is this is the cool thing when it start at the top if they get good leadership at the top things could change I sort of felt like a lot of the people that were there at that board meeting, even the officers, even when you saw like the commander Riley, she came to the door. She was just a nervous wreck. It looked like she was a nervous wreck. If they get good leadership, they don't have to be stressed like that every day. It's like, if you're not with us, you against us type of mentality. Um, and absolutely, she can, she she don't even have to, Kim Fox don't even have to ask the citizens. She could just turn on the news and see what's going on in her district, county, see what's going on and go from there. But it's like nobody is. But now that it's reached Fox News, what you think? What you think? I think now that it's reached um, Fox News and all over the world and other people are covering it it's about to change i think it's about to change now when do Ky i'm looking up when kim fox leave office because let me see when does she leave office anybody know i'm googling it right quick when does kim fox get out of there Let me see. What is it? Um, Cause this would be her third term. This would be her third term. And we know, I think Burke won. Let me see. I just want to pull this up. But thanks for being here, y'all. We won't be, we're not gonna be long-winded. I just want to share. Let's go ahead and play this, but okay. So um And isn't Jesse Smollett taking his thing to the Supreme Court or something like that? He like going all the way with it. Why won't it play, guys? Hold on. Sorry. Let's see, guys. I'm laughing. Thanks, Regina. <laughs> I love that uh, in the uh, amazing tribe, he called us a burgundies. I, I love that. I love where the burgundies. Okay, let's see. Um, let's go ahead and play this. But yeah, uh, Juicy Smollett, he went to the Supreme Court, and I'm trying to figure out what. Okay, let's play it, guys. Sorry, I had to wait on the commercial. Kim Fox knows she gives hair. I love her hair. It's so nice. Fox plans to leave the job in 2024. She fired back. It was an emotional day for Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox, greeting supporters at the City Club as she prepared to announce that she would not be running for re-election in 2024. I will not be on next year's ballot by my choice. I do this decision, I didn't take it lightly. Fox, who came with a prepared speech, did not use it, but in a fiery delivery, she went after critics who often blamed her progressive policies for a rise in violent crime, noting that after she took office in 2016, it decreased three years in a row. To suggest that this administration is somehow responsible for a rise in violent crime is disingenuous at best and a lie. 
Former House Republican leader Jim Durkin, who was in the audience, one of the targets of that criticism. Our legacy is not going to be very good. It is going to be one in which, from my perspective, that the rights of defendants were placed above victims. Fox says she was proud of her efforts to help bring about bail reform and to get justice for those wronged by the criminal justice system. She acknowledged five individuals in the audience that her office had helped as a way to go after those who criticized her handling of the Jussie Smollett case, Fox seeming to look at the media in the back of the room as she repeatedly said, Did she want to ask me about Jesse? Fox said she came into office with a mandate and viewed her job as a minister of justice. I leave now with my head held high, with my heart full, knowing. That better days are ahead. While this announcement comes as a surprise to some, there had been talks in Democratic circles for the last year that Fox would not run again, and her virtually non-existent fundraising efforts during that time would seem to bear that out. Fox did not mention what her future plans are, but it's going to be apparently in the private sector after 2020. Sounds like a very dramatic event today. It was. Mm -hmm. It was a very good speech on her part. So um, this, was, this was who won. Let's go ahead and share it over here. And they don't have no, I don't, I haven't even seen this lady talk. Like nobody even, <laughs> did anybody, do anybody know who she is? Oh, thank you, John Luna. Thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Great stream today as usual. Keep up the good. Everyone in the chat hit that, that it's Tiff's head. <laughs> hit that like if it's, if it's Tiff's head, smash it. Yeah, we we'll have to smash it. Yeah, um, Kim Fox is cute. It show sure is. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so let, let's go to the. Do have anybody even see, heard this lady talk yet? Let me see. I'm like, do we even know? Let me share. I'm looking for video of her right now. I'm like, what? So this is who's going to be our next state's attorney. Um, Eileen O'Neill Burke. Okay. This is a new. So this is um, she's taking over Kim Fox office. I guess she got a microphone. I got to find. <laughs> But this this race was really I gotta find her talking somewhere because I haven't heard her talk. Um, this year Democrat Democratic primary for Cook County State's Attorney, it will be remembered as one of the narrowest local primary election wins in recent memory. Eileen Burke O'Neill Burke just barely squeaked past Clayton Harris III in a race where the outcome wasn't decided for nearly two weeks. Yeah, they were like had to count the votes and everything, guys. It got real juicy and heavily in heavily democratic cook county o'neill burke who will face republican nominee bob ferretti in november oh okay so she didn't win yet she didn't win sorry guys it was so it was a democratic part thanks guys so um so she got to face republican nominee bob ferretti in november so kim fox she's okay so she's still the um state's attorney for a minute so she could She could still, here we go, here we go. I just want to read this part. Black voters overwhelmingly backed Harris, but turnout was low, y'all. We got to vote, y'all. We got to vote. The, it, like, the turnout... The turnout, like if it's rain or snow, the most the most time I saw some people vote like they did was probably when um, Biden this time people were waiting like after the panorama and stuff, they were waiting in line in droves. Like before, besides Obama, but Obama we know the turnout was real, but then they kind of slacked the voter turnout and then it picked back up when Biden was running. Right, um, black voters overwhelmingly backed Harris, but turnout was low. 
Despite losing more precincts than he won, Harris remained competitive thanks to the strong support from black voters in the city and suburbs. Harris won nearly 77% of the combined vote in majority black precincts throughout the county. He amassed about 67,000 more votes than O'Neill did in those precincts. But the margin could have been much wider if those precincts in those precincts if voters had turned out in numbers similar to those seen in two previous democratic primaries for state's attorney in 2016 and 2020 when democratic primaries featured competitive presidential races at the top of the ballot majority black precincts turned out far more voters than they did last month man majority black precincts countrywide logged out Lost about 126,000 votes in last month's Democratic primary for state's attorney, a far cry from the 350,000 in 2016 and 230,000 in 2020. In those elections, majority Black precincts were instrumental in state's attorney Kim Fox victories. Oh, you guys. So it went all the Democratic primary, it went from 350,000 to 230,000 to only 126,000 votes this time. So Eileen um, O'Neill Burke, she wins most votes in white, Asian, and Latina, Latino areas. So you guys, oh my gosh, the, that kind of made me nervous. Like we, we got to get out there and vote because look at um February, what we have, February the 5th, for who's going to be mayor of Dalton. Um, look at the past, the referendum, even the mental health referendum that passed, it wasn't a huge turnout. I mean, they did not pass, but that uh, the food second food pantry passed. Oh my gosh, that made me so nervous. Okay, let's get to these comments and get on up out of here. I said we were only going to be here for a little bit. And I just wanted to touch on that. Biden was selected, not elected. Oh my goodness. Hey, amazing trap. Hey, amazing trap. Hey, exactly, Erica. Thank you. Oh my goodness. So yeah, Eileen's not in there yet. The the that was a Democratic primary election. So now I guess November is the real voting time. Um, oh, I wonder. Okay, so when the little the little um oh oh I'm sorry guys. Oh, I'm so sorry. When the little um when it's time to vote and the mayor and the township uh, endorses someone, you know, with that punch this number card, they'll have Eileen Burke on it, right? So would it be reciprocated? Will Kim Fox have an influence? Because they're part of the Democratic Party. Will Kim Fox have an influence on who to vote for? Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Oh, yeah, because we got the, I think I got the little thing right here, right? So here, I pull it up right here. So this was what we had on the Democratic Party. Is Eileen on here? Did Or did anybody have to vote for her? Not in this area, right? Let's see. Thank you. Okay, so we got Bradley Davis. The commissioners, state representation, president of the U.S., president, U.S. representative. Then we got judges. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so state's attorney, Cook County, was Clayton Harris the third. So that's who they said to vote for over here. I was just wondering. So Clayton Harris III was endorsed by uh, Mayor Supervisor Henyard. Hmm. So now, when we get the ballot, does it turn? Does it turn around now? Do she put? I I don't know because I haven't been following the election stuff. So now, when we get the ballot in the mail from the mayor, will she put? Eileen on there? Hmm. 
And I got a question. Oh, I guess so. Okay, so the judges and the state's attorney go on that side. Because I wanted to know how come Clayton wouldn't be on the other side. But now I see. Okay. So, yeah, we had, so that, there we have it. So I want to know if we'll see something different. Okay, guys, um, I'm not going to hold you. I'm not going to hold you. <laughs> I know those candidates were like, don't endorse me. Well, it's about to go down because who's going to be on the mayor's ballot for, like, okay, so February, when they handing out the, the literature, the campaign literature, who's going to put her on there and who's going to put, like, if they say, like, let's say Jason House run, who's going to put Jason House on there? like endorsement like when the letter come out from like the thornton township mayors and stuff who's going to get the endorsement this is crazy this is really really crazy and i was thinking about something last night i, I was listening to shay and i was like i think the basis is the mayor wants to do everything herself i think that's the whole the whole situation is she wants to do everything herself so i was going up and looking at um Okay, so you got the food pantry with Dr. Scott. For whatever reason, they're not letting Dr. Scott um, build out. So I digress. That's something we just don't know what's going on right there, right? However, she started handing out food boxes. And then while she was handing out the food boxes, she was like, yeah, because I like to make sure you can utilize your food, but like she was, she basically told us that she selected, you know, or her team selected the food box for Easter. Like you got your seasonings, you have your turkey, you have your greens, you have your eggs, you have your milk. She was saying, so you can utilize your food box. Whereas if you go to Dr. Scott pantry, and we talked about this before, she has like the dry goods, the canned goods. You can still get meat, but the meat is frozen. So it lasts you a long time. You know, if you can put it in the freezer, um, you have your dry goods, your non-perishables. Um, you can get milk there too, but it, they also have the option of like the carnation milk. So you got, you got your baby formula, you got your powder situation. So because you got to go to the food pantry and you only could go to Dr. Scott's food pantry once a month, that particular location, um, you only could go once a month. So they give you stuff like pastas and stuff like that, that can last you a long time for those 30 days. You know what I mean? So you don't have to worry about it. And it was like, okay, we did get an Easter box, but you get greens, eggs, and milk that's going to be perishable after you finish your dinner for Easter, where are you going to go from there? So like, we get it, but I feel like she wants to do everything herself. Like, um, even when it comes to like the restaurant row, I think she wants to put the, implement the restaurants herself, where it's all her idea. And I think that's the problem. Like she can't do it all. She can't do it all. Should we, let's restart the mental health the, they they already had a mental health department, right? Thornton Township. They already had a mental health department, right? She goes and fires allegedly the whole mental health department and say, we need to add a tax and we need to build a mental health place. And I noticed that also in the magazine for Dalton, they're saying that Dalton's going to have a trauma center open up soon. And it's like, okay, are you going to put buds out of business? <laughs> It's almost like she just wants to do everything herself. So a lot of people say that the mayor is just the mayor and Thornton Township supervisor, but she also the liquor commissioner. So I forgot to ask uh, Jardis, um, is did did Blueberry Field get their mimosa license just under? Um, Supervisor Henyard, or did Zicarelli let them do it? I'm just wondering because by her being the liquor, the liquor commissioner in Dalton, uh, when Blueberry Field when they open up, and now I'm thinking about it, it's not a lot of sit down restaurants in South Holland, is it, guys? If you guys are from, I don't think it's a lot of sit down restaurants in South Holland at all. Hmm. 
I'm really putting in my head, where can you sit down to eat in South Holland other than Blue Blueberry Field? I just had to think about that. Um, will it go from now? Waltz can sign, can, can sell beer and champagne. You know, she's a liquor commissioner for Dalton, but does she have that kind of influence? Just wondering. Smoke turkey tails. <laughs> Mayor is 2025 of February. Yes. You got your smoky turkey tail. <laughs> so it just seems like she wants to do everything herself. Like I want to be mental health person. Um, I, I want my boyfriend to be in charge of the youth. Everything is under her command. Under her command. And she wants to do it all. And it's like, you can't do it all. Just do the jobs that you were elected to do or that you were appointed to do. Told his people that Tiffany adorns him and his crowd. And who, who said that? Who said that? Dr. Nicole Howe Scott has a good direction. She needs people she could trust to develop her vision and rapid growth. Yeah. Yeah, she does. So yeah, that's what I that's what I'm picking up. I'm picking up that the mayor, she just she wants to do everything herself. She wants to be the first to do it. She wants to be the only person to do it. And she doesn't want to share the spotlight. And that's where the problem lies. That's where the problem is. She's like, well, you're not going to come out here to talk about all the good stuff. Well, we know that good news doesn't move as fast as the salacious stuff, right? So that's just what happens. But um, you can't blame the media. You have to just go forward with your plan for the community. I don't understand why you don't need a patent on the back every step of the way. Okay? That's my two cents, guys. So look, we weren't even long-winded today. I'll be recognized, Mayor. You want to be long-winded? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. No, okay. Thanks, Steve. It was a joke. I was like, Ooh, what happened? What happened? What happened? <laughs> and you guys, thank you so much for helping me um, get to 6K. Like I said, I have to cut it short because I got to get to talking about my gypsy rolls and other content. I have neglected my content on this channel. So thanks for my OG subscribers. Some of y'all been in here. Like, I'm just going to listen. I don't know what you're talking about. But y'all been supporting me like I'm just gonna listen to you, Burgundy, because I, you know, I thank you guys for being here. Um, so oh, we made it to 6K. So shout out to the late night crew. Like I tell you, Shave carries me over that uh threshold. People crack up because they see me in a chat and they like you got a different personality when you're in uh Shay chat. I'm like, no, I, I got my opinions. Um, I, I my opinions, my name is still on there, so that's my opinion, but I think it's like at night when i'm on the late night crew that's my alter ego <laughs> when i'm watching that's my alter ego like burgundy after dark <laughs> and like here you got breakfast burgundy <laughs> politically correct burgundy y'all oh i said i wasn't gonna get messy but i'm not but i who in it put a one if you're in that Dalton politics group? Put a one if you're in the Dalton before I even say this, put a one before we leave. If you're in the Dalton politics group, put a one in the chat. Look, please put I need at least five. I need I need to know I'm not talking to myself right here. Cause I'm like, y'all, I got my thoughts on that Dalton. Hey Peggy, hey Commander. I got my thoughts on that Dalton politics group, right? Okay, I got to say it. I, please, I, I get it. Y'all, I'm not backpelling and coochie popping. I'm not, I promise. Two things about that thought. Hey, Aubrey, I told you so, Burgundy Johnson. <laughs> Aubrey was like, I told you. Y'all, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm breakfast Burgundy. Okay, so we already know how it is. How we already went through the Jedediah stuff. That's not that's not here nor there. Um, I'm I'm sorry. First, here's my apology. This is my this is my sorry for 2004. Q. Ruben stuttered. But 
my sorry for 2024. <laughs> Yo. I'm pausing, y'all. I wish I could see I got my head in prayer. I get it. I absolutely, positively get it. I get it. I want to pre, what did they say? Preface that. Yo, what is going on in there? And what is up? First of all, okay, let me start it with this. I don't think you should be able to post anonymous in that group. I don't think you should be able to post anonymous and say certain things. I think you should be able to post anonymous. Let me, you should be able to post anonymous, but if it's uh, towards somebody else, you should be blocked. Like if it's not towards the cause, like you should be blocked. Like if you go over there and say burgundy, um, Burgundy, this, this, and this, and this, and just spew out this falsehood inf information. You shouldn't be able to post that. That's that's what I mean. Or direct something to me anonymously, and then I have to respond to you with my real name. That's ridiculous. Or two anonymous people going back and forth. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But yo, I get it. Um, I know um Miss Vivian, um, she's the one that stands up and she had the, the cancer, the brain tumor, and she's very angry and vocal. She gets a lot of coverage, uh, about, um, her situation and, um, she gets a lot of coverage about her situation and she's told us her situation. I think Hannibal actually interviewed her. Um, so I know she was having this event and, um, he, she promoted on Hannibal's channel. I wrote it down. I put it on my board to do like, if I had, if I had the ability to do it. Um, so I understand poor her, I'm, I'm praying for her. Like what she's somebody that I, I definitely was like, oh my God, poor thing, you know, to have a brain tumor that young. And she explained that it was the personality change that she had that her dad was like look you either gonna go to the crazy house and that's that was her words the crazy house or you're gonna go to um the hospital she went to the hospital and she found out that she had a tumor right prayers for her for sure but yo what's going on <laughs> what's going on in the group you guys um in the group like I didn't know it was her at first because her name is not, I call her Miss Vivian, but that's her, Vivian. Her name is not Vivian, so Survivor Vin, Vivian is something else. So she started posting pictures, so we knew it was her. So you guys, she went back and forth yesterday. Please go to the, please go to the group and check it out. I'm like, okay, so I need to, one of two things to happen. Somebody come get her phone. Somebody come get her phone. Because the thing she are is posting, and so okay, so at the end of the night, it ended up with she had to move into a hotel because she felt like somebody was threatening her. So she had to leave her home and move into a hotel last night from the last thing we heard of Miss Vivian. So you guys, I don't know what's going over on over there in that Facebook group. Yeah, that anonymous versus anonymous i'm like okay so if you're gonna say something just go ahead and say it but if you're anonymous i understand maybe you maybe you work for the the village maybe you just don't like me i didn't want to say anything for a whole year maybe you don't want nobody to know but i think it's a, a anonymous could be used but it has to be subject subjective like i don't think they should be like it was somebody anonymous anonymously going after miss vivian in the group and i think that shouldn't be allowed um um, if it's something you're posting, that's fine. But I don't think anonymous, you should be able to attack somebody in the group. And then the person that you got, Ms. Vivian, basically responded to a ghost, allegedly. And then it goes from there to the last post I saw was last night was, um, let me, let me find it. This was her post last night, y'all. I was like, yo, what is... Okay, so she said, I quit this group. 
I am being threatened and I relocated to a hotel room. Madam whore made... <laughs> yeah. I'm just reading what the lady put, y'all. This is, I'm just reading what the lady put. Madam or mayor, oh my God, count your days. I know all the games you're playing. Add, add me on my page if y'all want updates. F Dalton residents who never wanted change. I fought for change and y'all wouldn't even be here without me. I don't owe nobody but my health and my son is not involved. So the threats is totally 100% taken seriously. Then there's somebody else in there that said, um, this is another person. She said, they threatened my kids. Uh, they said they're going to do this in my house. So we're like reported to the police. It's a, it's a, a level-headed person. And it's like um, reported to the police. You know what I mean? So people are scared. That's probably why people are scared to say anything. So I think the anonymous is good. But I don't think it's good if you um if you're directing something at someone. I don't I think that who's ever in charge of this should get a hold of it. Yep, it's called Dalton Politics. Yeah, you have to it because uh, someone says, yeah, it has become a bit unhinged, but I understand if someone's attacked verbally, they will lash out. Yeah. I get it. It's like it's like, okay, so. Well, if it's anonymous, somebody anonymous is coming after you, right? Somebody's anonymous coming after you. So you 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 go back, but you don't know how to respond to a, a ghost. It's ba it's basically a ghost, right? And then somebody is able to anonymously threaten you. That that ain't right. That ain't right. So I, I was like, y'all, y'all gonna have to see what's going on in this Dalton um politics group. It's quite different. It's quite different. Um someone I want to read this post from the group. And this is on Facebook. Um This is just my personal perspective on this Dalton Thornton Township situation. It's time to start our healing because certainly not too much is going to change until the next election. And if it does, it's only going to be a start. First, Ms. Henyard is not going to step down because she doesn't have, have to. And certainly we, the residents, cannot make her. Secondly, she is not going to approve any investigation into her shady activities. I also feel like the negative exposure has reached its pinnacle. The well-known auditors have highlighted all the illegal actions taken to keep the residents in the dark. The unknown auditors are trying to make a name for themselves. Enough is enough. There's a wonderful book by a wonderful author that says, blessed are the peacemakers. Michelle also said, when they go low, let's go high. We as extraordinary residents have done a great job of letting things be known to the proper authorities. It really broke my heart to see the little boy crying because he couldn't partake in the Easter egg hunt. The Cook County Sheriff should be policing Dalton because this police force is out of control. I'm really surprised at the South Holland police mirroring Dalton. So it's too much. So what do you guys think about that? Um, I think that like, we do got to get back to like a peaceful situation. I'm going to tell you, it's a lot of people that didn't even know each other that lived at Dalton. And they kind of bonded over this situation and they're trying to do different things. Um, I don't think that it should come to now as residents against residents because that doesn't help. Or as non-residents against residents or residents against non-residents because that doesn't help the situation at all. And this stuff is not going to be fixed at night, overnight. Um, and I think it, I think yesterday it was, I think succeeded to said it best. A list of demands would be nice, but like um, we have to start with the small things. And then this is what we can fix now. This is what takes some time to fix. 
things like that. You know, um, it's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. It's getting kind of scary. Anytime somebody feels like they have to move to a hotel room because somebody's trying to threaten them, that's not cool at all. And who do you tell? All right, y'all. As always, you make sure you take care of yourself and each other. Remember, I... Right, asking another employee who went on that trip. You went down to Springfield, and what were you hoping to do you in Springfield? You need to ask the people that handles that. I'm not the one to handle that. I was just riding the bike. We need more... Right, and commentary blue. Commentary blue. Burgundy. Burgundy. Commentary. Com commentary blue. Commentary. Comment Burgundy blue. Commentary 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 blue. Comm